Hello everyone, it's Matthew Stewart, the CMO here at Fintelix. And we all also right, have... all right, all right. This is Will here at Fintelix, the solutions archetype here. Today we're going to talk about Node.js versus PHP. Oh yeah, the century old debate. The battle between different tech community so... and the myth of career path chosen. Should you go left or right, good or evil? So let's open up by asking you to elaborate on these. We'll start with Node.js. Can you elaborate a bit more about what Node.js exactly is? Well, Node.js is actually a library that allows you to run JavaScript outside of your browser. So it basically allows you to do backend programming on your server using JavaScript. And that's pretty useful because your front end can be building JavaScript and your back end is building JavaScript and they're all JavaScript you just have a team of JavaScript writer doing stuff in JavaScript. Cohesiveness. And a lot of JavaScript. Tight community. And did I mention you get JavaScript? So now that they have a bit of an introduction about what JavaScript is, what about PHP? Can you give us a bit of an introduction to what PHP is? Well, technically that wasn't an introduction just about JavaScript, but also about Node.js. No JS. But in any case, PHP is more focused on sort of the backend scripting that allows you to program your backend in PHP. And then you can have a separate front end doing some type of development, either using some of the framework like Angular or React, or just use jQuery. But your front end is going to be JavaScript. Ha. Now that we know what they are, right. what Node.js is, what PHP is, what are the advantages of Node.js and what are the advantages of PHP? Well, to start things off, let's look at the advantage of Node.js. Number one, you have a whole technical team knowing JavaScript and that just makes it easy to debug, right? And that's when you're doing coding questions, even interview hiring, hiring new members on board, you're doing interview questions, you can ask them to write JavaScript code and they can usually tell you whether or not you can have front-end people doing coding questions for back-end people and vice versa. So that's pretty useful. Also, specifically, if you're building a web startup, usually the development community is very active for Node.js no environment. So it's easy for you to really leverage that open source community, that vibrant environment. And not to mention, if you're into mobile development, right? JavaScript is tightly connected to React.js because a lot of, like basically the React.js is built on top of JavaScript. So it, it's easier for you to pick up React if you are familiar with the vanilla JavaScript coding language. And you know, if you're building a mobile application, you can use React Native basically using NPM using to build a mobile app. So a lot of use cases, very, kind of tight development team that you can build. And also on top of that, you got a very active open source community ecosystem for Node.js slash JavaScript. So now let's look at PHP though. Like PHP is known for its stability. There are tons of framework, tons of existing libraries for PHP. Just to mention a few, you may have heard of Drupal, you know, WordPress. Those are all pretty famous and stable PHP framework, which you can use. Like if you're building a blogging website, there's no need to build every customized component. You can just leverage the existing framework, AKA WordPress, and you can spin up your blogging site in minutes. And that's pretty incredible. If you're building an enterprise software and you hire senior developers who are familiar with PHP, you can pretty much more or less expect what's going to come out of it because everyone's all very experienced. There's well-defined ways of doing things. There's less chance that you're going to cause any unforeseen errors. You're going to have a stable, stale project timelines in order for you to meet your deliverables. That's the advantage of PHP. It's stable. You know what you're getting when you get into it. And also there's a lot of mature frameworks which allow you to save a lot of time. So basically what you're saying is PHP is more, it's more mature. Correct. It's at a more mature stage. And usually it's, it's kind of like comparing Java to Golang. A lot of enterprise software have already been built with Java 
Angola is rapidly growing. Now that they know what the advantages are of both, what are some of the specific use cases of Node.js versus PHP? Well, technically, what you can do with PHP, you can also do with Node.js in most of the cases. But one does do better than the other, for instance, uh, in particular use cases. I'll give you an example. If you do a real-time chat application, because Node.js is a single thread, and, you know, I.O. intensive async uh, mechanism, you're able to build real-time applications much more easier. Like if you're doing a chat app, that's something that's I.O. intensive. Like it's something that uses a notification, or if, if you're doing something that writes to the database quite frequently. For instance, something that has a lot of transactions, like a PayPal transactional focused functionalities. It's probably better to do it with Node.js. So PHP can be easily integrated into some of the database management system because it's a long history in the past. And also if you're building a CMS system, content management system that is, for instance, you're building your own personal website with a lot of pictures that you constantly need to update. PHP has a lot of CMS framework out there that can allow you to build that easily. And also you can scale that. Uh, it's very easy to deploy, again, because of the matureness. A lot of the Linux distribution packages even contain PHP as a bundle when we're getting the Linux, Linux image. Is it possible to have a career in either one of these fields? I would say, yeah, if, you, if you're retiring in like three to five years, your entire career span is five years, maybe. So you don't think that somebody could make a career just focusing on one of these two areas? Here's the thing, right? Technology is evolving rapidly. What's popular five years ago may not be popular five years down the line, right? So before Node.js and you know PHP, all this stuff came out, a lot of applica web applications are built in Java. Right, so there was PHP, then there was the rise of Node.js, and now a lot of backend are building Golang. So you never know what's the biggest like trend. What I will say is, if you focus on um, one particular framework that is more modern, and well, we'll do while you do that, you continuously you can you continually learn some of the newer tech technology stack that keeps coming out. You will be in good shape even 10, 20 years down the line. And, and if you have to pick which one to learn first, I would probably go with Node.js because like I said, it's the hottest new thing and there's just a, overall a lot more things that can be developed with Node.js. A lot of like web app or mobile app that, that can really broaden your skill side and your skill, what you can, what you're able to accomplish with using like Node.js and JavaScript in general. And, and for PHP, there's already an existing large talent pool, so it's sometimes difficult for you to compete and win that race. Whereas Node.js in general, there's less people who are skilled in Node.js and you're, you're more likely to find some luck just by learning Node.js. But like I said earlier, it is never a good idea to stick to one technology forever. Or you have to make sure that you're constantly maintaining the eager to learn and pick up new technical stacks. Otherwise, it'll be like you're using MySpace in 2020. That's a little bit of an extreme example. But yes, I, I can see that being a valid metaphor. So there you have it. There's a little bit on Node.js versus PHP. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give this video a like, and leave yeah. a comment down below. Yeah.